Howdy y'all, welcome to Little Bits. And uh, I mentioned that I was gonna show my graphing calculator collection. So I need to do this in sections because I do have a lot and I have different kind of categories of graphing calculator that I have. Um, what you see in front of you is what I like to think of as my historically interesting collection pieces where there's some development work I could do with them. Maybe I will. I'm not particularly interested in spending time with that, but these are still interesting machines to me and I want examples of them in my collection and maybe someday I'll focus on porting software between them and understanding how to do that or something. But for the most part, these calculators do not have rewritable ROM. I have no access to be able to change the operating system to update the firmware to, for myself on these, on these particular models. And that's why I'm not particularly interested in spending a lot of time developing for them. Um, I'll start with this Casio FX9750G+. Plus. Now this is a device I found while thrift shopping because if I'm in a thrift shop and I see a calculator, I purchase it. Eh, that's not always true. But this was $5, so I picked it up. Um, have a little bit of buyer's remorse for it. I'm not interested in this calculator uh, at all. So we'll see. Maybe one day I'll crack it open and see what's in it. But honestly, I don't need this. The TI-81 I found also in a thrift shop, and I was very excited because it was my first thrift shop calculator find. Um, and it's just cool. It's a cool device. I have absolutely no I.O. If you can see, there's no port on this one. This is the first graphing calcula calculator that Texas Instruments put on the market. Um, and it was a huge success, partly because they had prepared the way for monopolizing the education market uh, by working with schools in advance of releasing this model. And that's a big part of why they have a large monopoly today. Uh, the 82, this is the very first calculator, the very first computer I ever held in my hands, really, honestly. And it was this exact model, right? It wasn't this exact one, but it was this model. It had the old school case. Um, they handed them out in class. I tinkered with it. I got distracted by it and then they took them away from us and I was very sad. Uh, but it really sparked my interest. Um, and it's a big, I, I fell in love with them instantly. Uh, this one, the 85, I have no experience with. I've, I've bought this on eBay recently along with this one. I bought them as a set. Um, the 86, uh, because they're just interesting calculators to me. I've never had one before. When I was in school and I heard about this calculator, the 82 model, this was still the newest version of the 82 model you could get. And this model was known to be able to run assembly language programs. So I felt like, you know, oh man, that's, that's cool. Hackers have that, you know? So... I was always interested in getting one of these, but I could just never get my hands on one. Uh, the 86, you know, it's the successor. It's very nice. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any batteries in these calculators and I'm not gonna turn them on. I have tested them, they all work. The 82 has a screen problem that I might try to fix. Uh, the 73, I actually bought a lot of five of these thinking that they were the Explorer series. That's my own fault. I did not do enough research I didn't realize the TI-73 was different from the TI-73 Explorer, so you know I thought I was getting a really good deal, and well, they're pretty good. Two of them have bad screens, which I will attempt to fix, um, but I may, you know, resell these down the line or something. These are pretty, pretty good condition. These particular pieces, except for the screens, which I think is easily repairable. So that is the historic collection here. They they just here for historic interest. Um, I'm not gonna delve deep into their history for this channel, but 
you know, I will talk more about how these calculators affected me and my history with them. And um, yeah, so I hope you enjoy that kind of thing because that's what we're doing. Now this set of calculators is actually very important to me. Um, this is the 68K series of T Texas Instruments calculators. And this was the very first thing that I ever bought with my first paycheck uh, from a fast food job. The first time I ever had a job. It, it was the most awesome thing. I had been waiting forever to get a new graphing calculator. I had had one before, it had been stolen, and I never had an 89, and I knew how powerful these were compared to the, you know, 82, 83, 83 plus, which was the newest of the Z80 models available at the time that I was buying this. Um, I'm in love with this calculator, I use it for many years, I mostly use it for finances, I don't do a lot of advanced math, um, I mostly deal with logic in my line of work, and... This is one that I bought a few years ago, the Titanium, a TI-89 Titanium, uh, from a friend for $45 from a colleague. Um, he was very, he thought it was very odd that I wanted it, and I thought it was very great that he would let it go for $45, because these were fairly new at the time still, um, at least in my reckoning. They might have been coming close to obsolescence. I believe this Voyage 200 model was out already at the time. Um, but yeah, we also have a TI-92 Plus. The TI-92 Plus is essentially the same as the 89. Now, there were previous models to this that predate the 89, but the 89 came out, and then they kind of finalized that the 92 Plus was going to have about the same functionality. Of course, it's got the QWERTY keyboard, and it's got a bigger, a wider grayscale screen. Um, of course, much like the TI-89 Titanium is an upgrade to the TI-89, um... Voyage 200 is an upgrade to the 92 plus. And let me tell you, this is a heavy sucker when you're holding it for a little while. This is significantly lighter weight. The battery compartment is also a much better design, although this takes double A's. So, you know, maybe it lasts a little longer, who knows. Um, now, what I love about these calculators, despite the fact that they have processors that are very much obsolescent, we're not really gonna be gaining a lot of value other than educational value out of exploring low-level Motorola 68K coding, uh, but that's probably true of the Z80 as well. So, you know, it's, it's just for fun. It's just for our own education. And quite frankly, the lessons we learn will apply to other more modern processors as well. It's just simpler targets to approach. Uh, as you can see, I'm running the stock firmware on both of my 89s, primarily because they don't have good keyboards to type on. Um, I'm running Pedram OS on this one and this one. And that is because it is very cool. This is a very Unix-y type operating system. I would like to learn how to extend it myself and stuff. That's a big part of why I'm running them. You can switch back to the stock firmware on the Voyage 200. Uh, I have not been able to do it successfully on the TI-92+. Plus. So this machine has Pedram on OS on it. And if you if you tinker with the TI emulators, TIMU at all, this is the default operating system that will run for these calculators, uh, which is pretty cool. So, yeah. And one thing you'll note is, you know, I can, I can get... Ooh. I can get a help prompt, you know, see what commands I have available for me. Uh, I can see what memory I have available. You actually have quite a bit more memory available than you would with the stock firmware because it, this firmware is just taking up less of the uh, the memory. Um, automatic power down still works. You can see results of memory command from before. This one has a lot of memory available. Um, yeah, very happy with how these operate. We will move on to the next set now. These three machines are what I'm thinking of as my primary development platform for Z80, Zilog 80 processors, at least 
the ones that live inside these calculators, which I believe are kind of custom. Um, this is actually the very first graphing calculator I ever owned. This is not the unit I owned. We actually just unboxed this the other day and the first one I had was stolen some time ago. So, you know, I have a lot of nostalgia for this particular model. I'm very glad to have been able to open a fresh one for the second time and I love it. It's got very little archive memory compared to these two, but that's okay. We're gonna use it as effectively as we can. This one just arrived today and I actually really appreciate the Silver Edition 83 Plus look. I never have seen one of these in person before. And, you know, I saw it online. I've seen them around on the internet and stuff and I never really, they just blow you away. They This one anyway, blows me away when I saw it in person. I, I've never seen one up close and I'm just very happy with the look of it. This is, uh, my TI-84 Plus. This was a thrift shop find. I was very happy with the pink color. I did not expect to like the pink color so much either. So, you know, I'm, I, th I think it's neat. I like it. I'm probably going to get some more of these. This one currently runs a third-party firmware called Collapse OS, which is the primary platform I want to develop for and the biggest reason that I'm investing in Z80 model Texas Instruments calculators. Right now it only runs on the 84 plus, but I would like to see if I can get it running on these. I also have, I do have a 73 Explorer on the way because I'd like to get it running on that as well. For all of these calculators, there is also another third party operating system called Knight OS with a K, Knight with a K. And it is pretty good. I believe it is also known to run on the 73 Explorer. Um, so I'll probably do some exploring with that as well. In fact, one of the tools from those projects, from that project is used in Collapse OS. So it's, there's some crossover in that particular field of study. Now, yeah, these are just awesome. I don't have many of them. I will be getting more. And I also plan to build a Zilog 80 breadboard computer and we'll probably make some videos about that as well. So yeah, let's move on to the next set. Here we have my non-Texas Instruments calculator collection, and I probably won't collect many more non-Texas Instruments calculators beyond this unless something really catches my eye. These are really the only ones I've I've been interested in outside of TI. And you know, we have the HP 50G, it's a classic calculator, it is wonderful. I actually think I'm more interested in some of its predecessors now that I've got a little familiar with it but this one's very programmable as far as I understand it. It has a third party flash available for it called New RPL, and we will be exploring that on this channel. The HP Prime, of course, we just unboxed the other day along with the Casio FX CG50. These are amazing, beautiful devices. I am leaning CG50, but uh, I haven't spent a lot of time with them yet. Just kind of some preliminary poking around. I've always wanted these since since I first heard about them. Uh, so I have them now, I'm very happy with that. The NumWorks calculator here is actually my favorite and the reason it's my favorite is because it's a completely open source design. Now there are some proprietary components on it, but you can buy them, right? You don't have to manufacture them yourself. In fact, it'd be very difficult to. So uh, you can go online to their website and find the the files you need to manufacture or have manufactured for you the printed circuit board inside of this calculator and then you can go buy all the components that need to be on that printed circuit board and solder them all together um, you could have that done at the factory for you for an extra price uh, but the fun parts the soldering right so you can build this calculator completely from scratch yourself you can even 3d print the case if you wanted to and you can modify it you can update it and you can see I am actually running you may not be able to tell I'm actually running a third-party firmware open source firmware firmware that is a fork of the original operating system on here this one's called Omega the original operating system is called Epsilon and it also both of these are 100% free open source software this calculator is unheard of it is unprecedented it is wonderful and everyone should buy one. If you are wondering what calculator to get, get this one. Support the NumWorks team. Build it yourself if you want to. 
this is worth having in your arsenal. And, you know, these are just for fun. So I'm going to learn, this is also, like I said, an arm. So a lot of the things that we learn on this calculator and this calculator are going to apply not only to these calculators, but to a great deal of modern computing systems in low computing space. Uh, not necessarily always things like workstations, laptops, desktops, but there are a tremendous number of embedded computing devices out there that you can directly relate a lot of your learning to when it comes to these two calculators, and perhaps this one as well. We'll see how different or similar the machine language is to the more modern ARM designs. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to explore these. Uh, they will not be my focus early on, but I will be spending time with them. And that is my complete calculator collection. I do have some more kind of in the works, some more in the pipeline that I want to get a hold of, uh, but I am nearing the end. And at, at that point, I will begin focusing on getting peripheral devices for them so that I can do things like gather scientific information, measurements for scientific analysis, and, you know, perhaps open them up and physically modify some of them without worrying about, oh no, that's my only one of this type of model. So that's the kind of stuff we're going to get up to on this channel. And if you are into that, you are in the right place. So y'all just have a wonderful day until next time.